Hey there. Well, I've talked about some of this before, but I feel it doesn't hurt to reiterate once in a while. Diversity to extremes is not your friend. It's not a country's friend. It's not an individual's friend. Too much diversity equals destruction or a destructive path. As much as it pains me to state that, I remember in 2004 or something like that, you know, someone on a, on a forum had just said to me over and over again, they said, you know, tell me one good thing about diversity. And I would, you know, tell them about uh, when you have a, a number of different mindsets contributing to something, uh, you have more ideas. But then he asked me, you know, well, how about in the long run? What are the advantages of diversity? And I had a little bit of a hard time telling him. He goes, yeah, and the reason why you're having a hard time saying it is because uh, it's not really that much of an asset. Not in the way that it's being implemented. Um, you can have diverse products, diverse uh, you know, types of companies, uh, companies that have their own way of doing things. If you have diversity in those ways, you know, great. But if we eventually start to go towards this idea of every business has to have an equal balance of demographics, so it's all diverse in that way, it ends up making everywhere less diverse because it's the same combination all the time. But when we try to force mindsets that are just completely opposed to each other, when you try to force them to get along, force them to get along, and not actually find ways that they can get along, that is not going to have good results. Now, one of the things that's been happening, uh, well, I, some of the reason why I'm making this video is uh, Inventor Gorilla made a video about, uh, you know, talking about, you know, asking the question, why are we, why are we becoming so uh, polarized and stuff? And he blames most of it on diet. And I'm like, well, I'm sure diet has some great amount to do with it. We have definitely have a different diet than we did 100 years ago and even 50 years ago. But, and, and diet does have an effect on, on uh, someone's uh, mental capabilities or um, it, it, it has some mental effects. But to me, the main thing that's changed just more recently, why things are just so extremely polarized is the internet, social media in particular. We have never, not in any point in human history, have we been at this point where we can communicate with so many people of so many different mindsets across the whole globe. Um, never have we had so much diversity shoved in our face at just you, you, you go here, you, you go here, and the thing is, it's, we're doing it willingly. We go here, and here is all this diversity. But there's also this element of a type of tribalism that's never been able to flourish before. And there are a lot of negative aspects to tribalism. But now it's any kind of little mindset that you could possibly have and think you're alone in thinking about 
you can share it and realize, oh, there's a number of other people who have thought this too. And then out of knowing that uh, you're not alone, you create a tribe. And there's all, all these little tribes building up all over the place in ways that were really never possible before because of social media. And then in order to preserve that tribe, you create an echo chamber. And when we start celebrating diversity and echo chambers and when we actually run across mindsets that are just so radically removed from the type of culture we happen to live under, um, we want to pretend that we we just embrace that diversity, but we, we really don't. It's 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 in words. It's nice little phrases. Oh, I love everyone. But there are things that clash. But every and this is not to say that these mindsets that clash with ours are necessarily bad when they are a, when they are separate from our culture. Every culture has advantages and disadvantages. There are there are certain areas where there is order, there are certain areas where there is chaos, and where that order and chaos is placed is what kind of defines the culture. And So, I mean, when you really look at it, there's there's not really any one culture that you can really say is truly better than another because you can always find advantages and disadvantages to any culture. But because we are... We can celebrate any kind of thinking pattern now and have and form a tribe based off of it um, we are becoming like when too many rats are put into a cage except in this case we're doing it voluntarily we are purposely doing this and to some, it, it will probably be our end. You know, cultural cohesion is going out the window, and what it's being replaced with, nobody knows. You know, how can a country survive when the cultural cohesion is gone? We're paying so much attention to these smaller, little bitty tribes that we're no longer caring about the larger tribe that we belong to, which is the country. Less about the larger tribe, more about the smaller tribe. And so we're nitpicking at all this stuff, most of it being stuff that doesn't really matter but we're nitpicking at all this stuff because of these little tribes that we're focusing on instead of the larger tribe. And it's killing us. I don't see a way of getting out of that. We're going to just suddenly start telling people, no, you can't, uh, you can't join together in things that you have... Uh, in common, you know, common mindsets, common interests, 
common worldviews where we're going to just start telling people, no, you can't do that. You must, you must be more on a nationalistic kind of level. You must think uh, uh, for your country. Are, are we really going to be able to push that? Could we push that kind of message and have that be healthy? As we all know where that can go if it's if it, that that kind of mindset is taken too too far too. Um, you end up with totalitarianism, you end up with fascism, you end up with things like national socialism. Um, you end up with that kind of stuff. You end up with uh, um, a theocracy. You end up with. Uh, you know, a, a corporatocracy. You end up being uh, with an oligarchy. It's sad that we 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 have a mixture of an oligarchy and this fake sense of us. Uh, Our, our, our sense of what our freedoms are has our focus on that is less because of things like social media because we are focusing so much on our little bitty tribes look at this little tribe I've formed look at this there might only be five people in this tribe but it's the tribe Tribal bickering. So how can we get larger picture? How can we get back to that without making that concept overbearing? How can we go towards larger picture without it becoming actual nationalism? Now, advantage we have here in the United States is... You know, people can say, "I'm, uh, you know, I'm African American. I'm uh, Italian American. I'm Mexican American. I'm uh, Christian American. I'm Muslim American." But there's always this American thing, and we we have that advantage in 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 some of this in our language. But it seems that's being kind of made taboo as well with a lot of the concepts that are coming up you know more micro tribes uh, tribalism so what do you do how are we going to survive this can can we survive this information age and this communication age can we survive this well we'll soon know right